How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. This week, I'm gonna be giving you a different, I'm gonna be giving you, I'm gonna be doing a different kind of video today, and that is giving you tattoo artist red flags. Giving you tattoo artist red flags. Red flags of tattoo artists. What? If you're someone that's looking to get your first tattoo or maybe getting a new tattoo, here are some red flags you should look for before choosing an artist. So without wasting any more time, here is my first red flag. If your tattoo artist is doing the consultation, designing, and tattooing all in the same day of the session, that's a red flag. Your tattoo is not gonna be unique because the artist is gonna go on Pinterest or Google and he's gonna start looking for the most famous references that every tattoo artist has used then put a quick design together just so he can start tattooing. Your tattoo artist is not going to be putting 100% effort into your tattoo because at this point, his attention has been divided in three ways. The consultation, designing, and tattooing, that is a lot to do in one day. Just designing can take hours and hours of doing research, finding the right references, make it flow with the body, make it make sense, tell the story. Unless you're doing a portrait, then I totally understand that it's all in the same day because you give him that picture and that's what you're getting done. By the time he gets to tattooing, he's gonna be overwhelmed. And there's a possibility that he might rush the tattoo. And that leads me to my next red flag and that is, looking at the client like a transaction rather than a relationship with your client that you're about to tattoo something permanent on their body. Before I start explaining this red flag, I, I wanna say that there is clients that also don't appreciate tattoo artists or they also see the artist as a transaction. But for this part, I am talking about the artist, not the clients, maybe I should make a separate video for red flags for clients. I just want you to imagine this first. The client has to take time off work. They have to plan ahead save their money because tattoos are expensive and if they're from out of state they gotta buy a plane ticket and book a hotel and i don't think it's fair that when the client shows up you're just like okay well it's my payday today just give me my money i'll give you whatever you want it doesn't matter here's your tattoo instead making a little bit more personal of like getting to know the client first what do you like what do you like about this piece how do you connect to this piece and then put something unique for that client and make it special for that client because you know is something permanent that's going on their body forever. Instead of looking at the client like a transaction, look at it as like, man, I am so honored that I'm gonna give you something that you're gonna carry for the rest of your life. If you make the whole experience special for your client, the money will follow eventually, but do it because you want to. Another thing is when the artist looks for any inconvenience to raise the price. Now, I don't mean when the client starts adding too many things to their project and something that you guys, you guys never talked about, that's not the case because that is wrong. When you, the day of the appointment, the client just decides to add way too much and it's just too complicated. I'm gonna use Tattoo Gate as an example. So um, booked a consult with her a couple months ago. Consult was non-refundable. It was $180. That was listed on our website. That's fine. I showed her these uh, reference photos as to what I wanted for a half upper arm sleeve. She then, proceeded to tell me after I had already booked my, I had paid for the consult, she told me that she had these three options for her design fee. So the first option was $1,500 plus tax and you get um, a concept sketch and you can make one minor change and then a final design that you'll review. The option number two was $3,500 plus tax um, where you got two concept sketches and a couple changes and um, a final design review again. And then option three was $6,000 plus tax where you would get multiple sketches and lots of reviews and lots of changes and like a canvas of your concept. At first I kind of thought that that price was going to then be taking it out of the final cost of my tattoo but then I find out that it was not. So Monday rolls around and she sends me this. This is her concept sketch. It is nothing like what I sent her. It's nothing like what I wanted. She said that if I wanted another sketch, she was going to charge me the difference between option one and option number two, which is $2,260. They were charging so much money to draw a tattoo that didn't even look good. And they were charging extra to make any adjustments to the drawing. Like, come on, man. 
That is crazy! They use any excuse to charge extra and I don't think that's fair either. The next red flag is when the artist is late to their appointment. I'm not gonna say much. That is just insane to me. I understand if something came up in the morning, I totally understand. Communication is key. Let the client know, hey, you know what? Something happened this morning. Can we push it two hours from now? But if you're late because you couldn't get organized with your time or maybe your sleeping schedule, man, I, that's crazy to me. <laughs> For my appointments, I like to be at the shop two hours prior to my appointment because I like to get there, relax, breathe, study my image, look over my stencil, what am I going to use today, what kind of cartridges am I going to use today, how am I going to record, what am I going to do. But when the artist is late and the client has been waiting at the shop for a while, you have no other choice but to stop rushing your, your, your station and get ready as fast as possible because you don't want to waste more time. So being late to your appointment is very unprofessional and it's a red flag. For the next red flag, this one is very important. Pay attention. Go to their social media and make sure that they post healed work. If all they post is fresh tattoos, mm, I don't know. It's questionable. I always say that that tattoo you did is not done until it's fully healed. Posting healed work is probably one of the best things that you can do as an artist because you get to showcase how good you are at applying. Blah. How good you are at applying. Then that's a tongue twister. How good you are at applying your tattoos. I mean, application is key and the way it heals, it's gonna show the way it's gonna hold up over the years. If your tattoo artist is only posting fresh tattoos, then it's questionable. And the last one, man, I've, I've been seeing a lot of videos that I'm like, oof, that's a little cringy, my dude. And that is how clean is your tattoo artist? Do they wash their hands? Do they apply the stencil with no gloves? Do they shave you with no gloves? Little things like that can really tell you how clean your tattoo artist is. One that I've been seeing a lot lately is when they wrap their phone or tablet or even their Starbucks coffee or their juice and they put it on their tray. Oh. I, get, I understand it's wrapped, but man, that phone has been everywhere. The juice, I don't know, my dude. I just don't have anything on your tray. If you see your artist touching the tray with no gloves on, oh, just cancel your appointment on the spot. Just cancel it. But that was just a few red flags that I thought about. If you have more red flags, drop them down in the comments and I'm gonna be reading them. And if you have something more to add to my red flags or maybe you disagree with my red flags, I totally understand. Drop it down in the comments and let me know your thoughts. And let me know if you like this video. Maybe on the next video, I'll talk about clients' red flags. Thank you so much for coming back and watching this new video. I really appreciate you. See you guys next week. Peace.